Hey, hey, Cherry Kamusta. Welcome, welcome. We are live now and ready to rock and roll, as it were. It looks like Don Morocco, in the meantime, is currently set to be the leader in the uh, sickness, the stable that the WWF uh, had initially built around Rowdy Roddy Piper, who's currently toxic as fuck, apparently. Meanwhile, we're currently looking at stealing Dick Mur Murdoch, keeping Brad Rigans, stealing Mr. T, and currently actually looking at bringing in for developmental John Tenta, Bob Holly, and Art Barr, and uh, bringing Eric Bischoff. <laughs> oh, oh, of course, I know. <laughs> Mwah. I know that cherry. <laughs> Anyways, uh, as I was saying, we are also getting ready to bring Easy E here into the. Ah, oh, Ryan! Welcome in, welcome in. So, a few weeks ago, Piper ended up in a scandal. Let me see if I can bring this up here. Roddy Piper became embroiled in a scandal in week four of January 87 after his regular use of prostitutes was revealed. So he was instantly fired by the WWF. And now we're just waiting a little bit because we will swipe him. We might actually do it while he's still just a little bit on the toxic end. Because the last time we hired him, or tried to hire him, rather, the w, or the WWF was the only place he'd be willing to work because we were a medium-sized company and they are a big-sized company. Yeah. I don't want to take such a huge hit right now. But I've been considering it, actually. In the meantime, let's see here, I have this tournament will finish at the event, as will this one. Dean Malenko faces De Beers in the last semifinal matchup for the TV title contenders. So... Get ready to forward there. And we're also letting all of our TV deals out, um, for contracts outside of the uh, events uh, cancel out, mainly because we're looking at doing a little something different here with um, the cards. We're looking at moving a few things around on the schedule. I want to have a couple A shows and I want to have a couple B shows. And our B shows are going to be Monday and Friday because that's when we can use Dusty. Actually, I might not need to now. Holy shit. Oh, wow. See, I will say I don't remember really not liking his in-ring work, but I also don't remember liking his in-ring work either. 
I could literally not remember a single damn thing Alberto Del Rio has done in ring, whereas Andre Andrade fucking A. Give me him in the ring any day. Muda. Give me Muda in the ring any day. Bam bam. Alberto I don't know if he's really anything special at all. <laughs> right? Alberto was... Eh, I think really the best thing about him had been his gimmick before that... What was that European Union collab thing that they had going on again at one point where... He took a bunch of guys, slapped them all together to make a group of heels, but you never had them be any kind of threat whatsoever. They're just, oh hey, Miro was a one-time U.S. champ, and Sheamus is a big uh, Irish dude. And then there's Andrade, and. Uh, God, I can't remember. What was the English dude's name in that group again? Let's see. We need to get our Southwest. Popularity spilling over. So I need to figure out where. Ah, uh, we have not yet. We have not yet. Um, I will go ahead and. Uh, yes, thank you, Ryan. Thank you, uh, Wade Barrett. And yes, I have not. Uh, done anything as far as that goes? We'll have to touch base in the Discord on the uh, next booking committee stream, but. You know what, that, that might have reminded me. There we go. Boom. I just popped in the question on that because I was never going to remember. That TNA save, I think we're going to be able to do really good with that. Let's see, Mid-South. Northwest. We have better spillover in Mid-South. You know what? Let's go ahead and do something here. It's not going to be as large of a turnout in the crowd. But we'll see what we can do. Let's see. I think we have Colonel De Beers and Malenko open it up. That's what I think we do. Head Oats is going to come out at the end. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. I am too, that's, that's why I threw his name in there. Uh, I was hoping to get both him and... Uh, 
both him and um, Richard. So we got the yes from one, and I know that Ryan. I know that you said that you're a bit busy as far as stuff goes. You don't know how committed you'd be able to be, but you know, whenever, whenever you, I guess, whenever you'd say you have availability, just go ahead and give us the heads up. It's considered a standing offer. You know, I really should make Colonel De Beers versus Dean Malenko our main event. If I put Dusty on last when you could put not nah, Dusty. Let's see here. Who do I want to put with Dusty? Holy shit. Exactly. Yeah, that's one of the things uh, I acknowledged initially right off the bat. Have a blanche, daddy. Who else do we want to put in there? Um... I think Dusty's in the program for the uh I think he's in the uh storyline for the uh world champion just in general. Okay. Harley Race, just because Harley Race is in the storyline and he's back from injury after how long? Oh, yeah. Hmm. That fucking jambalaya is good. Let's see. We're gonna call this in ring and have this be an epic. Slow build that shit. And I really don't care who wins that. We're gonna go ahead and uh, put Ryan Hildebrand and Boris Malenko on there. But past that, I think we're kind of set. Let's see now. How do we set up the main event? That right there is the question. Let's see, um... Oh, I know. There we go. I'm gonna set it up with an ambush. Oh, shit. Toriumon save? Hmm. Interesting.
Let's see here. Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, we are looking good so far for our Friday stream as well. For uh, uh, for uh, what you call it, for Stardew, because I just touched base with uh, Mystic over on that side of things, and she is uh, all set for that. Let's see here. You know what? I know what we're going to do. Jim Cornette is going to petition for a match against Let's see here. Let's see here. Let's see here. Oh yeah, I was gonna freestyle this, that's right. I was gonna go boom. And I was gonna do Jim Cornette on entertainment. And Bobby Eaton on overness now that he's a star. Star quality is lacking and his charisma is not quite there. So yeah, overness right now is the best way to do that. Let's see here. We need to figure out how we get Harley Race into the fight, so... That's going to be after another match. Um, let's see here. Cactus is going to face Hisakatsu Oya just for fun. Nice little uh, call in the crowd match. Sitting there though at ringside is going to be Oli.
after that. Um, I feel like I want to have Doom against someone, but I'm not sure who. Let's see here. Okay. Fergie, Wells, we're gonna get you in here. We're gonna have us a tag team match player. We're gonna have Doom. This is Carl Fergie and George Wells. <laughs> Let's go ahead and switch that then so that way uh, Carl Fergie is not set to be a competitor and Involved. We're gonna give that one to Ron Simmons there. And have that one be a wild brawl. And I think we're gonna script that. Granted. Yeah. I usually prefer not putting the script in, but Maybe we do that this time around. One here. Um, so we got one, two, three matches on already. Before the main event, rather. So we got what next? I think we need to do this. Corny on the way down to the ring is going to introduce Dusty. With Sweet Stan Lane taken out at least for the night. It's looking like it's only going to be a night injury. He should be ready to rock if he can make it. Live, but... Paramedics are saying give us a 24 hour time window before you step in that ring again, Lane. Oh, yeah. Hulk, who are you putting over? You're putting over someone tonight. Have I done this match yet? I haven't. Oh, oh, of course you can, Cherry. Of course, enjoy. That one is uh, Jambalaya. Let's 
Let's see here. <laughs> He's a bit unhappy. He isn't like really mad about losing to Luger. He's only a bit unhappy. Oh, we we have Hogan's fucking self-esteem just flushed down the toilet. I love it. I fucking love it. That's hilarious. I think I'm gonna have Sting face another uh, bottom carter tonight just for a fun little uh, working with someone at the top kind of thing. There we go. Obviously, the Sting was going to win that. There we go. I figured it was a storyline note. I wasn't 100% though. Interview this go Arn Tully Gary Gino Give them an eight minute segment at the top of the show or bottom of the show or other. Okay, so We start the show off with Pauly Dangerously of the Dangerous Alliance, currently representing the original Midnight Express, calling beautiful Bobby Eaton down to the ring, taunting him about the fact that they are not moving ahead to face the tag team champions. Okay, Cherry. Love you, too. Mwah. So. With that, Bobby Eaton comes out, and he's expecting, he's expecting an ambush by the Midnight Express. He is not ready, though, as a fucking gold belt is hurled through the crowd and over both barricades. Tony and Arn pummel Bobby Eaton down on the ramp. That is how we start the show off. Following that, we have a number one contenders tournament matchup, the last semifinal match, as Ted Oates distracts Colonel De Beers, allowing Dean Malenka to slip the Texas Cloverleaf in. After that, we have uh, Jim Cornette and Bobby Eaton go into Arnie's office and talk to Arnold Schwarzenegger about getting a match with Tully Blanchard.
and Schwarzenegger says, okay, you and Stan Lane will want a match against uh, Blanchard and Anderson, or you want a singles match against Blanchard, you got it. I'll be back. I'll be back, you know, just to kind of get that. After that, we have a nice little exhibition bout between Cactus Jack and Hisakatsu Oya. As Ole Anderson just kind of chills at ringside, scouting his opponent for their next matchup. After that, we have Stan Lane being shown bloody unconscious victim of a sneak attack. Who would do this? We're not sure because the last guy who did it, Big Van Vader, has not been on a beatdown spree. And uh, Andre the Giant is nowhere to be seen in this building tonight. Following that, we have Doom putting on yet another impressive victory. As Doom number two, as we all know, Ron Simmons hits the Dominator on George Wells for the one, two, three. After that, we have Harley Race appearing in the ring as he shows off the money given to him by the Four Horsemen for assaulting Stan Lane. After that, we have Sting going on against Rip Rogers in a singles exhibition bout with a fantastic fucking end. After that, we have Arnold tell uh, Mr. Eaton. Looks like they're bolstering up. Arn Anderson has taken the night off, but it looks like Tully Blanchard has a tag team partner in Harley Race. So if you do not select someone, I will. Eden takes that seriously. And after that, we have Lex Luger in the rack on Hogan. And we have our we have the opponents in the ring. And out comes Bobby Eaton with his manager Jim Cornette. At the ramp, they stop, and Jim Cornette announces the mystery partner, Dusty Rhodes, as they both stroll down the ramp into the ring. After that, we have Harley Race and Tully Blanchard catching the surprise victory here as Harley Race hits Bobby Eaton with a pile driver. But that was a fire main event. Excellent show to start us off for the week. All right, Brad Rangans. My offer to you is the only one you're currently taking this seriously. Okay. Also, here at Shono is on the rise. He is currently one of our trio champions. Let's see what do we got here.
Okay, Southwest. Southwest, how have you been progressing? 56. Southwest is the one region where we're really weak and that we need to be strong in for our uh, move up from medium to big. Let's see. Let's see here, Chono. Okay, it looks like we have Robbie Gibson now, which is good. Okay, we can't upgrade the US broadcaster yet. We should renew offer events. You get 35 to the company from that revenue deal, okay. Okay. I think we are set now. Now, one thing you'll notice is that I got a lot of local Japanese networks now. This was what we did uh, during our uh, off time over the last bit there. We'll hit that. Check out a Psychology session between Harley Race and Scott Steiner. Okay, I can dig that. Let's see, we got two tournaments to finish up. Malenko versus Hart, which is a rematch, I believe. I don't remember if there was any significant match between them before, but they have met 
I'm pretty sure. Actually, yes, they have. Add it. Okay. Malenka wasn't able to take the belt off of uh, Hart last time he held the title. The light heavyweight title that Sabu currently holds. He did beat Hart in a preliminary match, and the two have not tied up since then. So I think we need to have a technical masterclass there. If I recall correctly, I believe I have to do something to stoke the coals for that, but it can't be. Let's see here. Where's the match aim? I'm trying to make sure something there. I believe I should have a engaged crowd. Let's see. Oh my god, <laughs> in the Reseda Country Club. <laughs> okay, let's see here. I think we'll do the Reno Sparks Convention Center. Just because the Cow Palace is uh, certainly not as ideal. Midnight Express, where's the gold standard? Hey, hey, welcome, welcome, how's it going?
I'm actually gonna have uh, the old Midnight Express dominate in this one. Randy Rose is gonna get distracted by Jim Cornette for the finish. Let's see. Italian Sal, okay. Who do I want to put in there against Ron Simmons? <laughs> Jeff Sword has the overall. Although Larry Sharp does have the psychology. Yeah, Larry, can you sell your ass off? Okay, Larry's got the best. There, so we're gonna go ahead and uh, do that there. Now we're gonna have, ah, uh, the tournaments are just finishing up today, actually. They've been working out though. Uh, I can't type in Ron Simmons, he hasn't been revealed yet. Doom number two. This is Larry Sharp. Hey, what? You know, I really should have looked at that. Cobra's got the best selling. In that case, what we're going to do, we're going to put Larry Sharp with him. Just because I fucked up. Now, now there's a reason to have brought Larry Sharp in. I'm not sure why not. You've been able to before, so... I really don't know why you wouldn't be able to. You... I've seen that you've posted before, so... By all rights, you should be able to. Huh.
Promises. I have 16 days or one match. We're gonna do here. Jewel Duke versus Sabu. That's gonna be for the AWA World Light Heavyweight title. With Sabu picking up the victory. see what is next here I think we gotta get Windham a win again because it's been a little bit Kurt Hennig is going to distract Garvin as he brings Precious down. Actually, he sends Precious down. Turn this into a work the crowd right before our technical masterclass between Hart and Malenko. We're gonna have, yeah, basically, we're gonna have uh, a match in between the two tournament matches. Is Junkyard Dog a light heavyweight title? <laughs> Never mind. He he is not a ladies and gentlemen, the junkyard dog is not a light heavyweight title. He is, however, a light heavyweight. Wow. That was some straight up Steiner shit there. I'm the world heavyweight championship. <laughs> Fuck it, eh? So I think for fun, we're going to make this match between Junkyard Dog and Buddy Rose a number one contendership match for the uh, light heavyweight title. And because we currently would have either, if we did have Leduc take it off of Sabu, we'd have a heal. If we had Sabu retain, we'd have a heal. So we gotta have Junkyard Dog. We're gonna keep Buddy, Buddy Rose strong there. <laughs> Hogan, it's Vader time. You know what? I hate the idea of doing this. 
but we go now we've bought us about like four more matches where we just shit all over hogan <laughs> oh no that's gonna be in between that and the main event who is in the main event There we go. Bob Eaton and Stanley, and they're going to get a uh, chance at revenge. put Terry Gordy in which means we're gonna put Coco Beware in all in ring spectacle not epic Coco Beware, how is your psychology doing? We're not gonna have it be... There we go. Okay, perfect. I think we have that set up well. Ooh, there we go. We got like this. Hogan comes out to state that Hulkamania will return very soon. And to prove that he will face anyone who dares answer his challenge. And responding to that call, Big Van Vader. Wait, who is currently in a storyline with the power team? The Steiners, okay. Aw, Hogan's a little upset. I already altered the booking. I'm not altering it again. And for those who were unaware, the booking that I altered it, I added Scott Steiner at ringside. That was the most I could change it. <laughs> or at least the most I was willing to.
Let's see. I think Tali has a little bit of a little bit more overness. So we'll put him right before the main event. Tron Guard about his upcoming match with Terry Gordy. Kurt Hennig is going to taunt Jimmy Garvin, Jimmy Jam Garvin. pay-per-view because they will be meeting up there. And that looks like that is the show here. So we'll go ahead and start off with Hogan issuing that open challenge. Vader happily accepting. After that, we'll have a unfortunate matchup between Doom and Pink Cobra just to start off the night. After that, though, we have a really good matchup between Sabu and Joe the Duke. Sabu really start to gain steam. After that, we really start the show because we have the four horsemen, Larry Zabisco, Tully Blanchard, Arn Anderson, and Terry Gordy interview with Gene Okerlund ahead of tonight's matchup main event against Coco Beware and the Midnight Express as well as against their respective title defenses at the upcoming Supercard later this week. After that we have uh, Barry Windham hitting a superplex on Jimmy Garvin after a distraction from Kurt Hennig Damn it. I did misjudge that. I did misjudge that setup. Technical masterclass did not work as much as I was hoping it would. After that, we have Kurt Hennig. I know. Maybe, maybe I've been just utilizing them too much. But this time around, I also didn't have enough time to do a 10 minute angle. I, so I cut it down to just doing five. And for whatever reason, I've been getting a far better score on 10 minute angles versus five. Having the horsemen just talk and talk. After that, we have Junkyard Dog beating Buddy Rose. Going on to face Dean Malenko. No, not Dean Malenko. That's the number one contender. Junkyard Dog will be going on to face Sabu for the number one con or for the for the number one contendership. He won the number one contendership. What the fuck am I doing? He will be facing Sabu at the Supercard for the light heavyweight title. Boom. After that, we have Dean Malenko. Touch base with Rod Tron guard hyping up the fact that he will be facing Terry Gordy at the Supercard for the AWA TV title. After that, we have the Gold Standard beat the Midnight Express, who performed 
in a dominant fashion. But Tom Tom Pritchard catches Randy Rose with the DDT due to interference from Jim Cornette because these two teams, the Midnight Express and the original Midnight Express, they got the piss boiling and they're ready to fuck each other up. Something fierce. Following that, we have, of course, Doom and the Steiner Brothers just about to rip each other's head off. And Big Van Vader catching a decent little match here, or a decent little rating here, but unfortunately with Scotty at ringside, it did actually drop the angle because it was kind of a garbage match thanks to Hogan. But hey, we're harvesting Hogan's popularity for as many people as we can. And we have the Four Horsemen catch the victory after Tully Blanchard hits a figure four leg lock on Bobby Eaton in the main event for the victory. And not a good show here, unfortunately. Not a good show. An okay show, but far below the standards. But... What can I say? Sometimes you run into a little bit of growing pains. Ladies and gentlemen, our two steals, Dick Murdoch, where are you currently? We're stealing Dick Murdoch. We're stealing Mr. T. Um, I'll show you here in a moment here because we're actually signing two of them right now to development deals. Boom. Art Bar, a real-life former tag team partner of Eddie Guerrero, and John Tenta. Bob Holly For the announce desk, I'm all right with signing Eric Bischoff. Let me go into news here. I'm not familiar with referee Robert Briscoe. Don't know who Sean Simpson is. Not familiar with Michelle Starr. Max Payne. La Tigressa, who I might actually be all right with. Oh my God, right? She might be a valuable asset when we do sort of a women's division. Oh, okay. Vladimir Petrov, we've seen. And then we get to 
Marcus Laurinaitis and Sid Vicious, who we've already sent to developmental, Conan, and Eddie Guerrero, of course, who we've already sent to developmental. Hmm. Now, what is their schedule, anyways? I think I put ASWAs to our regular one. Huh. How many people do we have in all these other ones? There's so many in CCW that I think I'm going to pull some of them from there and put into the other. I'm going to send them elsewhere. Eddie. I'm going to send you to ASWA. What? Uh, Eddie. I'll make it up to you. But we need some people to build it up. I'll make it up to you as well, Keish. Rodney, I'll make it up to you as well. We need bodies down there, that's all. Um, who else? Savio Vega, I just called up with that intention. Who else did I bring up? Hey, this might give you a chance to get booked a little bit more. This is the huge problem I have. I have too many damn people. Who else did I call up? Is here, is um, Eddie. Um. Shit.
I completely forgot. I swear I brought up five people from developmental. Maybe I'm wrong. Let's see here. Oh, okay. Yeah, I didn't have a pick at all, no. Okay, he works as an announcer, so maybe we, you know what, now we'll keep him. I was about to say, let's send him down to another spot, but you know what, we'll, we'll keep him for an announcer. Ladies and gentlemen, they have not, they didn't cancel the fucking show today. Holy shit. So in the first matchup, we have Batu beating John Tenta by DQ. Okay. Nice find. Thank you. Thank you. Huh. Red Bastion. As far as I'm aware, I, I'm not as familiar with Red Bastion in general, but I do believe he himself was fairly legit as far as a talent. Certainly not a... That would make sense right there too with everything that you found, especially with the uh, comparable uh, start date. Ooh. So we have the great Coquina teaming up with Mark Laurinaitis. And Mark Youngblood teaming up with Ve uh, Savio Vega. Brian Blair beat the Black Warrior. And we have Eddie Guerrero, Carlos Colon, and Barry Horowitz beat Doug Summer, Rick Root, and Danny Davis. Holy shit. Okay. Okay, it's time for you guys to build up again. Build up some kind of popularity. Okay. Here we go. 
We have to deal with everyone else's morale issues. However, we are not dealing with Hulk Hogan's. He gets one maybe once every month just to kind of keep the coals a little bit stoked. Boom, there we go. Hogan is still recognizable, but I think we're getting him to barely. Ah, good call, good call. Dark Heavy Metal Persona. Okay. Yeah, completely different there. Buffalo Peterson. Okay. There we go. Good call on that one. Thank you, Mike. Yeah, I was, I was wondering there for a second. I was like, wait a second. I was just surprised I didn't see a um an enter an an entry for heavy metal Van Hammer. Just because of how he started off. Let's see. Just because I would like to see that match in general. I don't even give a shit who they booked to win it. 
I just want that match. There we go. We're gonna have the sh we're gonna have the chic throw a fireball at someone. That's what we're gonna do. <laughs> I mean Sabu you know you, you gotta you gotta boost him to the moon when you have fucking everyone in the world trying to put him over Jerry Law gets brought in he decides I wanna fucking put over Sabu like within two days of starting in the territory Andre the Giant <laughs> comes in and says, I will put over Sabu. Fucking Christ, Andre. How am I going to sell that? Let's see here. You're not wrong. You're not wrong. Psychologically, no, they can't be. I, f I have a feeling there are a lot of fireballs in Andre's future. Welcome back, welcome back. Let me see here. Sheik is just throwing fucking fireballs all night. That's all he's doing. 
one at Cactus Jack for the dis uh, for the uh, um, outside interference. One at fucking Andre the Giant. The sheet came here, and he came here to throw fire. I'm gonna just say that. Yeah, Brett and Ellen. You know, you're not wrong, actually, Mike. I think that's a good idea. Do I currently have Sabu in a feud with anyone? All right, Josh, I got my rogue hydrate right here. Ah. <sighs> Donka Shane. With Andre the Giant's injury, I feel like he's not going to be as useful in the Sting AWE World Champion one right now, so... You know what? Yeah. Condry. We're gonna we're gonna have only Bobby Heenan as the uh, other member of the Heenan family involved in that. Actually, you know what? Even though we'll have to re-add him when we bring him on, we will add... You know what? I just fucked up. On Tuesdays, I completely fucked up because I put Terry Gordy opposing Coco Beware. Meanwhile, it's Dr. Death versus Coco Beware. Too many fucking horsemen. Mike, you know that thing I told you I was thinking on doing? I think I'm gonna do that soon. When's the last time these two faced off? Uh, okay, they've actually faced off somewhat recently. Oh yeah, it was for the tournament actually.
because I don't know what kind of chemistry these two are going to have in a match, I'm going to put that in on eight. Uh, crowd cool. And I'm going to put something else in between here to be a insane matchup. Cactus and Coco. We're going to further three different storylines with this match because why the hell not? And we can get away with it. I'm going to take 10 minutes off of the two in between our matches just to see what we can do for angles. Arn and Tully are going to taunt Steve Kern and the Dr. Tom Pritchard. Actually, they're going to do that. Eric Bischoff is going to get his first chance at holding a mic in the AWA here. We're gonna have him interviewing Tully and Arn. That gives us three guys instead of having to balance it between Rod and Gene all the time. Let's see. Give Bischoff the job of saying stuff and you're set. Give him any other job, ooh, yikes. Because someone's always going to have his ear if he's booking. So you're fucked there. Unfortunately, he doesn't have anything to offer in ring, so you're fucked there. But him just saying words. You're set. Let's see here. Um, da -da 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 -da. Changes that up.
There we go. Larry Zabisco. Aaron Anderson. Jack Gordy. Tully Blanchard. And Gene Okerlund. Y'all are going to have 10 minutes at the bottom of the show. Jimmy Jam Garvin, Kurt Hennig, The Raging Bull Manny Fernandez, and Road Warrior Smash. Just battling it out backstage. Give them three of their minutes back and I think we tack the uh, last minute onto the main event. Maybe we know a Ric Flair win. Why not? Just for some suspense. All right, at the beginning, yep. Eric Bischoff looked lost out there, first day on the job, fucking new guy. Although he did work the crowd well. As they taunt the gold standard ahead of the um, pay-per-view. After that, we have Sabu arbitrarily defending his AWA light heavyweight title against Cactus Jack just because he can. Cactus Jack's got a full dance card because he's in two matches tonight. After that, we have Andre the Giant come out to pick a fight with Sabu. And we have Sabu just wailing and wailing, not moving that mountain of a man. Only for him to turn around and catch a fireball from the Sheik. After that, we have Doom beating Brett Owen Hart of the Canadian Guard as uh, Ron Simmons, Doom number two. It's Brett Hart with the Dominator. And after that, we have Terry Gordy taunting Dean Malenko once again ahead of the pay per view. Following that, we have a intense matchup as Ole Anderson catches Norvell Austin with the diving knee. Okay. Flair's Horseman picking up a victory here tonight. That won't be their only. After that, we have a beatdown backstage between... Manny Fernandez and Road Warrior Smash, and Jimmy Garvin versus Kurt Hennig. Both of these duos will be facing off. After that, we have Junkyard Dog hit Dog Headbutts on Brad Rangans for the victory. Following that, we see the Stinger heading down to the ring. And we have the one, two, three, not even the submission victory for Flair. After that, we have the Horseman shit talking at the end of the show because they do believe that they're going to be holding on to all their gold at the next pay per view. The next Supercard, rather. Ooh. Oh, 
Bunkhouse Buck? No! Not Bunkhouse Buck! I mean, even though Bunkhouse Buck ain't doing shit for us anyways, I'm not too worried. <laughs> okay, so our 76 is going to recover. Okay, it seems that our one show that dropped really only had adverse effect for the most part for our main territory which is likely not going to do a whole hell of a lot now already jeez we're, we're hitting our popularity cap so fast it's it's gonna be hard to grow at least at this point i think outside of certain spots see here jeez I don't even know if anyone else has presence in India and we have like 52 <laughs> Jeez! <coughs> All right. Well, I think with as much sleep as I've been getting the last couple nights, having to go into work early, and the fact that I have to go in to work early. Yet again, manana. I think I am going to be calling her here. But before I do that, I do want to go ahead and remind you that uh, <coughs> I have socials to keep track of <coughs> what I got going on. Although I do need to be better about that. So Thursday this week, we are taking off as a recoup day. But tomorrow, we're going back to our Be a Pro at 630 with NHL 2022. And uh, other big thing that we're going to do. Friday, we're getting that farm on. And I'm touching base with uh, everyone in the uh, booking committee about availability on Sunday. So we might have an early Sunday stream, maybe around noonish or so, because I know that we got some across the pond friendos joining us. Um, yeah, um, that should be where we're at as far as uh, the schedule goes. Um, am I forgetting anything? 
630 be a pro on Wednesday 9 central with Mr. Kit and Fox of course um, so I do, I do want to go ahead and ask anyone who has not already followed her if you would be so kind as to pop that oh pff. okay so I, I never mind I, I mentioned her and then I go ahead and put my fucking hyperlink in because I'm on full on autopilot Ugh. it's it's a rough week it's a rough week I'm just saying that from the get-go all right I'm going to catch some much needed sleep because I slept over half the day yesterday not literally but it felt like it and I'm still fucking tired as hell <laughs> all right have a good one, y'all, and thank each and every one of you for stopping in. Where we stop right here means next week we begin with the supercard. Till then, adios.